together and online where well, they are more. <laughs> we can see each other in here and even have fellowship with masks. more difficult online. We don't even know where everyone is right now who is watching us online on YouTube. And if you are following online, um, if you can do it. You can type your your place, where you are from, where you are watching from, in the chat online. If you are in Berlin right now, don't write that you are in Jerusalem, uh, but also don't type your exact address. It's not necessary to make it that public. By the way, if you want information from us, you can give your name and your email address. But don't do that in the chat on YouTube. Please visit our website for that. And you can give us your information there, your contact dates. And you can apply for our newsletter and for our information. We would really like you to to apply for that newsletter and to, to keep in touch with us. So please don't that don't do that on YouTube, uh, but send an email or fill out the contact form on our website. But so uh, we can know where everyone is now, without any names or very specific information. You can just write your, your city where you are at right now. And by the way, those that will be watching the service later on, if you have the possibility to place comments there, you can still uh, write where you're from. And if you want to stay in touch with us, please send us your contacts. But I repeat again, please, not on YouTube, but Yes, um, in our contact form or via email. I want to continue our topic of last week today um, about the holy place. We said that redemption or salvation consists of three parts. So it is somebody has been redeemed, he has been uh, bought or led out into a new life. And the third part is when the new life has found its complete completion, its fullness. And the middle part uh, is the process of our changing. And if we look at the history of Israel, that which is written in the Torah, we see the people of Israel who had left Egypt um, with signs and miracles to go to a promised land and 
in order to live there in joy and peace and together with God. But the middle part, which is the uh, major part of the Torah, is um, the marching through the desert with God. Which is partly seen as a sort of preparation for the Holy Land, for the um, Promised Land, yes. Partly it's seen as a uh, letting die of the old things that were before. So in between the Exodus and the entering of the Holy Land, a journey through the desert needed to happen. And if we look at this, as a prototype or a foreshadow of that which we have in Yeshua. We see that Yeshua redeemed us, he, he bought us, he died for our sins, he shed his blood for us as an offering. He rose again from the dead, went up to heaven, and poured out the Holy Spirit. Who gives us a new birth from on high when he comes down on us. And leads us into a, a covenant with uh, the Most High, that which we call the New Covenant. That is which we have now, what we have now in Yeshua. Um, a kingdom has been promised to us in Yeshua and with Yeshua. The kingdom of the Messiah. And even more than that, We have been promised a time where there won't be any uh, diseases or tears or problems, no anti-Semitism, there won't be um, people in hunger, there won't be climatic problems, and catastrophes, disasters. There won't be any sin that is, has been promised to us on Yeshua. And in order for this time to come, Yeshua had to die to take on himself all the filth of the earth. And that was already said before the creation of the world. And the personality of the Messiah existed in eternity already before the creation. And it's a part of the godliness which cannot be separated, an essential part. Yeshua did it so that this eternity of which I spoke can be guaranteed to us. So that we can have this great promised life, the eternal life. So that we will be resurrected from the death just as Yeshua was resurrected. So that all the old things um, that pull us down would leave us. But 
that that doesn't all happen in the first step with the redemption and the being brought into a new life. This happens with the new life and the fullness which is to come when Yeshua returns. And we are now um, all together in the time in between the first and the second coming of the Messiah. We have come out of slavery, but we haven't fully entered the promised land yet. Just as Israel back then with the exodus of Egypt. We are now in the desert. The desert is when the old things already lie behind us, but we haven't fully reached the new things yet. We are in this passage or passing in between these two events, that which has which Yeshua has already done for us and that which is still to come. Israel never went through the wilderness alone, right? Or did it happen uh, that God said, uh, well, please wait for me a moment, uh, I'll have Shabbat now and I'll come back. Or I'll, I'll take um, a holiday. <laughs> I, uh, some holidays on the uh, some islands or somewhere. And you can stay in the desert <laughs> during that time. Well, you can rest or just walk a bit around, do whatever you want. You know, the desert was a place for Israel where God was constantly with them. And please realize that difference. Um, independent of what the Jews did in the desert, God never left them. Um, at the same time where they were there in sin. God wouldn't have had a problem to leave them and, and, and and take away his presence from the temple. Well, he had said that his presence would be in the temple, that that would be his place where he lived. But in the desert, he always stayed with Israel, day and night, without any breaks. And I said that during the history of Israel, during those 40 years in the desert, that was the greatest time until today because God was always with them no matter what they did and I would say that we see that in the uh, scriptures of the New Testament of the messianic uh, scriptures That from the moment where we received redemption in Yeshua and from the moment that we said to God, we sinned, and I'm fed up with this life full of sin, I want a different life, give us, uh, forgive us, cleanse us. Uh, 
I am grateful to Yeshua that he died for that and rose again because in that moment where we said that to God and the Holy Spirit touched us until today God has never left us for a moment independent of what we do or what we think independent of the fact of whether it's sin or not he stays with us in this wilderness Yeshua is with us and the desert was a blessed time for Israel And the time in which we live now is a blessed time for us in Yeshua. And we are called to something that's called um, sanctification. So in the process of walking with God, we are changing into the image that He sees in us just as Israel should have done in the desert. We change day by day. And we change more and more into the likeness of the Mashiach, the Messiah. I'd like to draw our attention to some things. In our sanctification, God has a, an especially important role. Without Him, we can't even get a tiny, tiny little bit closer to um, the image of Christ. We cannot become better if God doesn't do it in us. The people of Israel wouldn't have got anywhere in the desert if God had let them. The people of Israel would have wandered for thousands of years on the desert. God haven't, hadn't shown them the direction where to go. God was important for their nourishment, for the fruit. He was important for the water. Do you remember? Without God, they wouldn't have had anything to eat or to drink. Without God, they wouldn't have had clothing. But with God, it was one miracle after the other, with food, with water. Without God, they would have been destroyed by the enemies. Without God, the exodus and this wandering through the desert would have been impossible. The way to um, perfection or completion isn't possible without God. And even more, if there were no God, or if He wasn't with us, we wouldn't know how to build um, the tabernacle, how to bring offerings. We wouldn't have a vision for the future. And we didn't know how to get there. God is really extraordinary and explicitly important for us. 
Let's look at some Bible passages. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23. First Thessalonians five twenty three. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. God himself acts in everything that is in us. in our soul and our personality. And that was the prayer of the Apostle Paul. May God do it because without him nothing is possible. We think that we can change our body through some physical exercises. Yes, but God is necessary for our sanctification and um, for our coming closer to the image of the Messiah. We may think that various ways of meditation or psychology can make our soul better. Yes. But it needs God so that this changement can really take place and becomes a reality. So neither our body or our soul can turn into this image of um, sanctification without God. No physical or um, psychological uh, trainings or whatever can reach that goal. So God is really exceptionally and explicitly important to reach that goal. Philippians 2, verse 13. Let's read verses 12 to 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and traveling. For it is God who works in you the will and to act according to his good purpose. Pay attention. It speaks about wanting and reaching, acting it out. 
And who should work all of this in us? God. And if he works this in us, we are pleasing him. Holy thoughts and acts come from a holy God. And if they come from a holy God, then they are truly holy. Not our thoughts. And not our personal acts. But God's thoughts and God's actions. And that is which um, makes our um, salvation more and more complete. And in the center of our sanctification, it's not me or you, but it's God. Whether it be our thoughts or deeds, the true sanctification is only when God does it. Without Him, it's not possible. Um, Galatians 5, verses 16 through 18. Galatians 5. 16 through 18. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The Most High has given us the Holy Spirit, thanks to Yeshua, who hasn't only given us the new birth from on high, but while He is working in us, He sanctifies us. The role of the Holy Spirit is important in our life. All everything that's good in us. He strengthens it and, or he gives more good things. And there's a constant battle within us between that which pleases God and that which doesn't please him. The Spirit of God fights of the evil things in us and the spirit should win. So act after the spirit, following the spirit. That's what it tells us here. He changes us. So we shouldn't trust in our flesh on the first line. Not in our wisdom or in our um, possibilities. We shouldn't look to our strength in the first, but we should trust on the Holy Spirit of God. We shouldn't look to the positive or good things within us 
but to God and that which His Holy Spirit works in us. Let's stay in that same chapter, read verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. This describes all the things that the Holy Spirit works in us. The fruit is a product. And if the Holy Spirit works in us, He um, produces this. <laughs> so it's a product of the Holy Spirit. And um, this is expected of us in the wilderness. There are a lot of commandments in the Bible. But if I read this, although all God's commandments are holy and good, I don't see a menu or a calendar in this which the Holy Spirit works in us. That which we read here is more important. That doesn't mean that Shabbat or the feasts weren't important. I don't want you to misunderstand me here. <laughs> Just as the Apostle Paul was misinterpreted for 2,000 years. I don't say that the festivities or the Shabbat are bad. But love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are more important. And that is what the Holy Spirit works in us, or what He should work in us. That doesn't mean that you'll sit down and try to do some meditations or psychological exercises to, in order to, to get this love in you. It means that if the Holy Spirit works in us, that is in us. And what is left to us is to live it out. and to show it um, before God and other people. We should place the Holy Spirit and God as the center of the um, the engine for our life. God and the Holy Spirit have an important role, but that's still not everything. You could say that's important, it's written everywhere. Do something, sanctify yourself, think. There are a lot of commandments for our sanctification, and you are right. God is the main one to work this sanctification, but 
man is a partner to God in this thing. We do it together with God. At every moment, God could just free us from everything. I know people who were drug addicts and all of a sudden they were free of it. I know alcoholics who have been free just that same way. And I know people who had other addictions and God just freed them in an instant. Maybe not on the day of their um, of their conversion, but he, he did it at some point in a miraculous way. But most often, he does that with our help. He showed the people of Israel in the desert what the tabernacle should look like, but he said, do it, build it this way. He said, create those elements. Uh, he could have uh, acted for the tabernacle just the same way as with the manna. The people of Israel uh, sleeping, in, they open their eyes and wow, there's the tabernacle in their middle. Everything is there. <laughs> and just everything the way that God wanted to have it. Every millimeter. Everything just as it should be. This light and all the measurements and the distances and the places of all the elements. Just like the manna. You don't have to saw, you don't have to reap anything, you just have to take it. God could have done it just that way with the tabernacle and everything else. But he said, you are to do it this way and do it, you will do it. So we are God's partners in his plan of our sanctification. In this desert, we walk with God. He goes and we follow Him. He rises and we rise. He comes down, or he, he like sort of sits down, so we sit down. He rests, so we rest, and if he walks, we will walk, we follow him. It is written, he um, carried us like on wings. But in another place it says the people of Israel um, went, <laughs> they walked. So he carried us and we walked. Is, how does that go together? <laughs> Isn't that a contradiction? No, it's um, two parts of the whole. Just for us today, he works in us and we do something. We are God's partners in our sanctification. Let's read some more scriptures. Romans 6. Verses 12 and 13. Verse 12 and 13. 
не царствует грех в смертном вашем теле, чтобы вам поминоваться его в похотях его. И не предавайте членам ваших греху по руке неправедности, но представьте себя Богу, как оживших из мертвых, и члены ваши Богу в руке праведности. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to Him as instruments of righteousness. And verse 19 I put this in human terms because you are awake in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. In other words, offer yourself to God. Um, give yourself to the Holy Spirit and follow Him. Every day and whenever it's possible, pray and speak. Lord, not my will, but yours. Work in me. I belong to you. My hands are under your uh, leadership and my feet and my head are my house my money is placed under you my knowledge belongs to you and I, I offer everything to you, all my abilities and all the things named. I, my thoughts, my hands, my feet, my abilities, my head, everything um, yeah, is for you to use. I give it to you. Romans 12. Verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. Everything that belongs to me and that is within me is God's. I give it to Him. Work in me. Work through me. Use me. Change me. I am yours. And everything that belongs to me is yours. That's our mindset on how our heart should be said. One more passage. Philippians 
Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14. Philippians 3, 13 to 14. The Apostle Paul writes, Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward, what is ahead. I press on toward the goal and win the prize for which God has called me, heaven ward in Christ Jesus. And right after that, there's a radical statement. Verse 15, all of us who are mature should take such of your things. So if you are strong in faith, test yourself. Do you think like that? That you forget what is behind and stretch out to what is before you? To reach the goal of completion every day? Do you think like that? If you do that, you will become more and more complete and holy. We are together in the wilderness. Our sin has been forgiven and we are redeemed. And a great kingdom is waiting for us. And now we are on the way. The way of our sanctification. and of the preparation for this kingdom. We try to live the messianic kingdom in some way already now. God is so important that he cannot be replaced and he is working in us. Without him, nothing good can come. So he's working the real will and the actions. It's the Holy Spirit who works the fruit of holiness in us. And to have an effective life in this time of passage. We trust in God, we live um, with the Holy Spirit, we're following Him, and we offer ourselves to God. Here I am, I'm yours. I give myself to you so that you can work in me and through me. Everything that's mine is yours. This eye, this ear, these hands, these feet, everything is yours. This bank account and everything I have is yours. Work and guide me. Direct me, not my righteousness, but yours. Not my holiness, but yours. Not I am doing it, but you. I do everything I can. Oh, all, all I can do is to say, here I am, work. And I forget that which is behind me, and I stretch out to that which is to come. and I live in striving for the goal of complete sanctification. Next Shabbat we will be speaking about Purim 
and afterwards I'll continue this topic of our sanctification. Um, yes, and I think that we have enough to work with for now.